rest of you guys had to race the big deficit and you go up three when you hit the two free throws. So what did you see as the plan before Luke ends up getting that step back three? And how did you feel about the execution? Um, you know, made a tough shot. Simple as that. You guys have had a lot of these losses this year, and yet before the win streak, how do you handle that just emotionally um, as you try to push forward and uh, when you know, these things things have happened more than once? Uh, you just move on, figure how to execute better, um, how to win win these games. And it's about all you can do. <laughs> what is it about this Mavericks team that, that got your and, and the, the entire team's kind of competitive juices Overflowing. It seemed like everyone was locked in, animated tonight. I don't know. I I can't really speak for everybody else, but I compete the same way every night. Whoever is on the floor. Uh, when you guys are, are playing in double OT, uh, obviously you train your bodies to, to play a two game season. But what does it feel like in, in that final session after being on the court um, that long? Like I feel great. I mean, honestly, for me, I feel great. I'm just happy to be on the floor to compete. <laughs> Russ, uh, Darvin said he wished that he had told the team to blitz Luca on the on the last shot of regulation. What do you think of the schemes, especially on those those shots that Luca tied in regulation OT, and and what do you think of the defense overall on Luca tonight? Um, you know, whatever the coaches ask us to do, that's what we do. Um, that particular possession, we got a one to one, hit a tough shot. Live with it, R- Russ. What have you got? What have you made? Um, not just tonight, but in general, of kind of this team's uh, kind of crunch time execution offensively. And I think you know tonight, five of seventeen in the two overtimes. Um, what can you guys do to be more efficient in overtime? Uh, it just depends on what kind of shots we're getting, um, where they are, where we're running. Uh, but watch film and kind of see what that looks like. Darvin, of several kind of key moments throughout the crunch time and overtime included, I wanted to ask you about the play uh, where Luka hits the step back three, what you guys wanted to get done uh, defensively, and if, if you were looking to foul versus you know trying not to get at. So what, what was the plan there? No, we weren't looking to foul. Everything was uh, red after 10, um, hit if we needed to. Felt confident in the five guys we had out there defending. And he does what he did what Luka does. He made a shot. I'm kicking myself in the butt. I needed to coach a little better in that instance. We should have blitzed him, but, you know, again, um, or at least forced him inside the three-point line. And, you know, it's a, those situations is kind of chaotic, a bunch of chatter, everything's going on. You're trying to figure out, you know, the matchups, and we're going to read it and switch anyway. So that was that. I'll I take the bullet for that. That, that. That's on me. We have to be better defensively in those moments and force someone else to beat us. I mean, you guys go to double OT, and there were um, you know chances in both the extra sessions. But the, I want to get back to the end of regulation and, and the look that Troy Brown Jr. got. What did you see on the play? I mean, it looked to me like it was a foul on the shot. Um, so you know, I don't. I'm not one to blame the officiating, uh, and I won't start now. But it just looked clear as day like it was a foul. Maybe I could be wrong, but uh, even still, watching it after the game, it looked like a foul on his follow through. But you know, we had a lot of different chances to to not be in that situation. Also, I'm proud of our team. They competed their butts off after being down 19. But um, you know, at the same time, you know, we we. We we got to do a better job finishing at the rim. We got to do a better job knocking down free throws as well. Um, to not even put be in a situation where we're dependent on a whistle. Darvin, it looked early on, especially in that first quarter, that the blitzing strategy was was not going that well um, against Luca. What changed, and and how were you guys able to kind of keep a lid on him throughout the the second half? I think it was only four for eleven. The second half when he took that last shot. I just think shot. pressing up on him, being more aggressive. Uh, you know, we, we wanted to keep a body on him, deny him when he was ever whenever he was off the ball. Um and then our backside when we did hit him, our backside defense, our guys off the ball, you know, they were in the stance ready to rotate, do what they need to do, give multiple efforts to contest and uh create that indecision and, and you know, we we did a great job rebounding out of those moments as well when we double teamed them. So it just, you know, it, it, it just it stings, man, to lose a game like this. But, 
you know, we just got to fill our cups back up, go back, look at it, um, learn from it, and, and, and get ready to compete on Sunday. Hey, Darvin. Uh, I think the only sub you made in, over, in either overtime was with 11 seconds left in the double OT. Um, how do you gauge kind of in the moment uh, lineups that are working versus maybe, you know, getting fresh legs in there? Well, just it's a tough deal because you, you have five guys that's great, uh, that's mustered up some chemistry and it have, has a great that have a great flow together. And, and then you also battling what you said, like trying to get guys a breather um, and, and, and trying to, you know, you got to be careful as, with that too because when you – I wrote that group, you know, for long stretches, a very long stretch from the fourth quarter to the second double OT, the second OT. And to bring a guy in cold off the bench, you know, that's that – I don't – you never want to subject anyone to injury. So you try to use your timeouts in a way that can get breaks – Hopefully the other team calls a timeout as well. You can steal a little rest, but you just have, you know, I just decided to go with those five. And, um, I, I, you know, I'm, I would do the same thing again. And, and, you know, we just had a couple plays that didn't fall our way. Last one, Ronald. Tyron, does Ty Luce you used to say that, like, LeBron would get more, he would get stronger the more he played, that he wanted to play all those minutes. Do, do you ever see him look tired on the court? Do you ever see him look like he wants a, a breather? Like, just... I mean, he's he's great about, you know, flagging me or alerting one of the assistant coaches that, you know, he needs a breather and, you know, it was timeouts. And and sometimes, you know, he's feeling the wave. You know, the game is going so good. He's in a good rhythm. You know, we're, we're fighting back or trying to hold on. So, you know, he won't – he'll 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 power through it. But, uh, yeah, at times where he gets fatigued, he'll signal me or signal one of the guys or one of the staff members and – We'll get him, try to get him out of there and get him a breather. Um, it just so happened tonight, we, we ran him straight through. And, you know, but he, he takes great care of himself. And, um, you know, tomorrow will be an individual day, a, a, a treatment day, and then we'll get back to it on Saturday and just start preparing. Again, learning from this game, things that went right, things that went wrong, and then um, try to focus on Philly and then get, come back and do it, the game and hopefully get it right on Sunday. Thanks, Coach. Yep.